Are we on air? Say yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. I'm going to tell you how the hearing will proceed, but first I have to read you a uh, notification that this hearing is being recorded in accordance with the requirements of the open meeting law. You will please be advised that this meeting will be broadcast live through local access cable on Facebook Live on the Public Access Facebook page and will be able to be found on the Lundberg Public Access YouTube channel within 24 hours after the meeting. To participate remotely from a computer, go to the Zoom meeting. Computer and app users may use the raise hand feature to request to speak. And with that, I'd like to introduce the board. To my left is Annie Aub Aubrey. 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 Sorry. Um, she's filling in for Lisa Normandin tonight, who's on vacation. Um, so the, I'm Alfred Gravel, James Bezikowski, Hans Winthrop, David Blatt, Tony Nicastro, and Steve Dubois. And the way the hearing will proceed is Annie will um, read the application and any other submitted communications. The applicant will have the opportunity for comments on the application or submission of additional documents. You'll please come forward to the mic and give your name and address. Board members will have the opportunity to ask questions that they might have on the application while you're at the mic. There will be a public comment period. You'll please come forward to the mic, give your name and address, and please address all comments and questions to the board. Tonight we are going to have uh, two hearings. Uh, the first one is a use. Uh, they're looking for a special permit from the ZBA um, as a, it would be a use permit in the village uh, center district. The second one is 30 Johnson Street. They're looking at a special permit to construct a home on a pre-existing non-conforming parcel after a teardown. And with that, I would ask Annie to please read the first one. We have an application for a special permit through the Zoning Board of Appeals through Mass General Law, Chapter 40A, Section 9. Name and address of the applicant, Christopher Hope. Hurlbut, Hurlbut and Tiffany Hurlbut from 469 Sunny Hill Road in Lunenburg, Massachusetts. Um, the application is as follows. Bright Eyed Incorporated, a registered 501c3 charitable institution, is requesting a special permit, ZBA, to operate within the Village Center District at 3 Lancaster Avenue, Lunenburg, Massachusetts. 3 Lancaster Avenue contains office space available for rent. The owner of 3 Lancaster Ave and Christopher, Christopher Hurlbut, president of Bright Eyed, have agreed in principle for Pri Bright Eyed to rent office space on the first floor, 700 square feet, contingent on approval of this special permit. Bright Eyed's primary purpose is to provide weekend food kits to students in need when they do not have access to school meals. Bright Eyed currently provides services throughout the year to three school districts, including Ludenberg. The space in question will act as headquarters for administrative needs, storage for the food to be utilized within the kits, packed kits ready to be distributed, and will provide space for volunteers to pack kits on a weekly basis. And in question, has the proposed action or use begun? No. The basis for this application is found in the following section of Lunenburg Zoning Bylaw 250-4.1, Permitted and Prohibited Uses. The street address is 3 Lancaster Avenue in Lunenburg, Massachusetts. The assessor's map and parcel is 71-1. The name and address of each holder of legal title to the land, which is subject of this case, is one family insurance agency, one Main Street, Suite 15, Lunenburg. Deed recorded, Worcester Northern District Registry of Deeds, Book 10244, page 369, recorded January 25th, 2022. And Will the proposed action be injurious or dangerous to the public health or unduly hazardous because of the recording traffic? in progress? <laughs> because of the traffic congestion, danger of fire or explosion or other reason? No. 
Will this action have a material adverse effect on the value of the land and buildings in the neighborhood or on the amenities in the neighborhood? No. Will the proposed action be operated with reasonable regard for order and sightliness of an open use? Yes. Will the proposed action produce noise, vibration, dust, odor, heat, or glare observable at the lot t times and amounts, clearly detrimental to the normal use of the adjacent property? No. Um, so there was a narrative included in this, um, founded in 2021 by Christopher and Tiffany Hurlbut, Bright Eyed's primary service is to provide food kits to students every Friday to ensure they have access to meals when school breakfast and lunch is not available. Bright Eyed has served the Lunenburg School District since 2022, providing over 1,300 weekend food kits, equivalent of 6,600 meals and 51 hygiene kits to students within all Lunenburg schools. This is made possible through the careful consideration, coordination, and support of the Lunenburg school nurses, principals, and superintendent. Bright Eyed is expanding in 2023 and will begin serving two additional school districts, Lemonster and Hudson, Mass. The increase in students being supported has resulted in a need to secure a larger space to operate. Bright Eyed is a volunteer organization that is overseen by a board of directors. Um, which can be found on brighteyed.org slash our team. Bright Eye does not employ any individuals. They included operational details, which includes administrative storage, packing and distribution, administrative general purpose administrative needs, such as bookkeeping and filing cabinets. All administrative work is managed by the current board of directors on an as needed basis. Storage, a non-perishable food items. All food kits contain meals, breakfast and snack items. These non-perishable food items are purchased in bulk on a routine basis and require storage shelves to house them until they are ready to be packed within a food kit. At any given time, we store two to four weeks of food in our inventory. The purchasing, delivery, and unloading the food is done one to four times per month by two volunteers, um, which needs two parking spaces. And care kits. Care kits are packed on a weekly basis and must be stored until ready for distribution. Packing. Packing typically occurs after business hours, 6 to 8 p.m., occasionally after school, 4 to 6 p.m., and on weekends, and hours vary as needed. Packing events are typically comprised of six to eight volunteers for two-hour windows and will be held one to two times per week, and parking spaces needed is between six and eight. Distribution. Care kits are distributed to the schools each week. A dedicated volunteer is responsible for picking up the kits from the location and delivering them to their assigned school district. Distribution occurs during school hours on Wednesday and Thursday of each week, and parking spaces needed are between one and two. There is no overlap in activities throughout the week. They are distinct and occur independent of one another. During normal weekday business hours, it is estimated that only one to two parking spots will be needed at any one time. The six to eight parking spaces estimated for packing would be needed only during evenings or weekends when other businesses are not operating. Um, there is an addendum um, containing pertinent details. Um, regarding what bright eyed is the operational needs and details and the number of volunteers anticipated at any given time to support the operation including anticipated parking spaces which was signed on the 26th of july 2023 by christopher hurlbutt and tiffany hurlbutt and the addendum um, I, Art Cavillo, owner of 3 Lancaster Ave, Lunenburg, Massachusetts, 01462, authorized Christopher Hurlbut, president of Bright Eyed Incorporated, to file for a special permit at 3 Lancaster Ave, Lunenburg, Mass, 01462. If you need additional information, please let me know. And there was an abutters list included. And that's it. Thank you, Amy. You're welcome. Okay, and with that, I would invite the applicant to come up to the mic, if he would, and you basically can add anything. Or I know you you had a lot in there, so we, <laughs> you gave us a lot to work so, with. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Christopher Hurlbutt, 469 Sunny Hill Road. Uh, I'm a 20-year resident of Lunenburg and a co-founder of Bright Eyed. Um, and I'm here on behalf of our board of directors tonight, and I've just prepared a, a couple of remarks. Um, Bright Eyed is a nonprofit organization that is committed to supporting the students of Lunenburg and our surrounding communities. Our mission is rooted in the belief that all students should thrive in school, enjoy the respect of their peers, and have access to the necessities that foster their growth and development. 
We've been in operation since 2021 when we began to provide services to the Lunenburg School District by providing food kits to the students in need every Friday, offering support for the weekend when school meals are not available. We partner closely with the Lunenburg School District and Lunenburg nurses who are instrumental in identifying students who may need support. Our goal has always been to expand our reach, and this year we are pleased to be expanding our services to include several surrounding school districts. As a result of the additional growth, we've outgrown our ability to operate from our home and are seeking a special permit from the Zoning Board to establish our space in the center of Lunenburg in the newly renovated property on 3 Lancaster Ave. This space will serve as our primary office and a space in which our volunteers, many of which are national honor students in Lunenburg, can help pack the kits that are distributed each week. Our desire to move into an office space within Lunenburg is driven by a sincere commitment to enhance our outreach and further our impact in our local community. We recognize the importance of zoning regulations that guide the development of our community, and we come before you today with a genuine desire to align our mission with the needs and expectations of our town. We believe that our presence in the center of Lunenburg will not only bring us closer to the students and community we serve, but also enable us to forge stronger partnerships with the local schools and businesses. We are committed to being responsible neighbors, fostering positive relationships within our community and addressing any concerns that may arise. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Okay, um, with that, what I'll do, um, just, just though, um, when you say six to eight volunteers, is that current or that, is that what you expect when you bring in the other two schools? Uh, that's what we'll expect when we bring in the other two school districts. Okay, because yep. uh, I know the parking is somewhat limited. Yep. Yep. And how do they bring the food in? They just truck it in once a week or so? Yeah, so right now, um, we actually procure the food through BJ's, and, and we would bring it in um, in a truck or in a van, and then unload it uh, and load it up into the shelves. And we would do that, you know, maybe one to four times a month, just depending on how much we purchase at, at any one time. Okay. And the, the only other the question I had, um, when you put the food out, they don't come to your facility, you send it to the schools? So volunteers or representatives from each school would come to, our, to the facility to pick up the kits for their school to, to bring to them. Um, I guess there's, there are a few instances where I'll deliver the kits to the schools, but we also have some representatives from, from some of the other schools that will come to us to get the kits. Okay, thank you. I'm going to open it up to the board for their questions and comments. Um, which area of the building will you be occupying? So, one towards the handicap ramp? Yes, um, to, it's to the rear of the building um, near, that, near the handicap ramp, correct? Thank you. Yep. Uh, the only question I had, Mr. Jim, is I didn't see any hours of operation. I mean, I, do you need any, I mean, typically, you know, when uh, applicants come before the, the board, mm -hmm. you know, we give them hours of operation. So do you have anything that you want to, do you have intended hours of operation or is this volunteer and you're going to come and go? Yeah, so we're, we're, we're completely volunteer based, right? So <clears> we, don't, we don't have employees. So there's not a, you know, it's not a 40 hour work week. So, yep. I mean, it'll be volunteers that are designated for certain things that are going to be coming and going throughout the week right so for example there might be one or two of us who are bringing the food you know in and, and stocking up the, yep. the shelves then there's the volunteers that will come in and sort of do the packing you know once or twice a week that's the what will happen after school or in the evening or even on the weekend um, and then there'll be the volunteers or the representatives from the schools that will come in to grab the kits for their schools um, so there's, it's not like a, you know, we won't have people there from nine to five, Monday through Friday. It's, it's more two hour blocks of time where, you know, we have volunteers that are coming to pack the kits. Sure. You know, a lot of times the National Honor Society kids uh, or, or kids from certain sports teams will come over. Folks from the senior center will come over. Um, you know, we try to involve, you know, a lot of different folks within the community to help sure. us pack the kits. Okay. Um, so it's, it's more structured in that, in that sense. Okay. Yeah. Are there people that um, will be there to oversee that have control of the building and the space? Yes, yes, there will be. Um, so we live we live very close by, and, and either myself, my wife, or one of our board members would, would always be present during a, a packing a packing window. Yep. Thank you. Yep. So uh, even so, with you. We kind of went on this, but the, sure. the volunteers, do you expect it? Like, you know, is this the, the hours that it might be occupied? Is this like 6 a.m. to 10 p.m.? I know it's two hour shifts, mm -hmm. but you know, when you're coming in with the van and full of food, is that going to be in the evenings? Is it going to be, you know, or, or what, what is you, you know, what should we expect? Yeah, so I would say 
uh, bring the food to the facility to stock, stock on the shelves would probably be during the day. Okay. Um, the, the volunteers that come to pack yeah. would, would most likely, more, more often than not, be either on the evenings, let's say 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., okay. or on the weekends. There may be some occasions where, you know, we have the students from the schools, like the National Honor Society. Right. Maybe they're more like 4 to 6 p.m. You know, maybe they're not quite as late into the evening. Um, and then the distributing the kits back out to the schools. Again, that there could be some volunteers who come and pick up their kits during the day. There could be some volunteers that come and pick up their kits, you know, late afternoon, early evening. Um, we still have to work through those exact, you know, through that exact schedule as the school year's, you know, just underway here. Okay. So really you're looking at it is that uh, by say nine o'clock at night, there really would never be, there no. shouldn't be anybody. Yet. Yeah. I would say, I would say after 8 PM, there would be no activity. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Any other question? Okay, um, and you are a certified uh, not-for-profit organization under 501c3? Correct, yes. Okay, good. Okay. Um, anything else? I know that, that you're here because of the, the use in, in the use table under the uh, charitable mm -hmm. institutions. Mm -hmm. um, it is listed that in, you know, you have to come before the zoning board, and that's Correct. why you're here tonight. Correct. Okay. okay. No other questions from the board? Okay. With that, I'll take a motion. It takes them for the oh, I'm sorry, public address? Anybody uh, would like to speak? No, nobody in the public is out there. That nobody? Yeah. Nope. Yeah, I'm right up. Good evening. Uh, Peter Beardmore, 282 Pleasant Street. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of myself this evening. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm, I'm actually a former associate member of this board many years ago. I'm a former finance committee member, and I currently serve as a member of the school committee. Uh, the school committee has a policy that only the chair speaks on behalf of the school committee. So I'm speaking on behalf of myself, but obviously very informed by my experiences on the school committee. Uh, I can vouch for everything that Mr. Hurlbut said. Um, <clears throat> despite what some of us would like to believe about the economic uh, status of a town like Lunenburg. We have many families in Lunenburg that are in great need. Um, and it is imperative that we have partners such as Bright Eyed uh, who are able to work with us to serve a variety of needs, some of which became more apparent during the COVID era uh, when Bright Eyed came into being, um, but have persisted over time. And let me just give you one example of why uh, having an organization like this, this close, uh, is incredibly important. Last year, we had to do a, a schedule change um, where we had to move some professional development days and turn um, a couple of one full day into two half days, I believe, um, as a result of some snow days and other scheduling uh, issues. And our cafeterias provide both breakfast and lunch services now in our public schools and we created a half day on the Friday before a school vacation. Unfortunately, like our use table, section 4.1, that does have some head scratchers, such as why does a charitable organization need to come to the ZBA to run operations in the uh, historical district? Um, our state also prevents our cafeteria from opening on half days. Uh, and that came up at a school committee meeting on a Wednesday uh, for a half day that was going to occur on a Friday. And the superintendent said, we will call uh, Bright Eyed and see if they can help us. And the entire issue, which was going to be a pretty substantial issue because it was a Friday going into a school vacation and we were concerned about our ability to ensure um, you know, that, 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 kid, that families in need are, are well taken care of. Um, the, the issue was literally resolved before start of business the next day, uh, and, and they were on it. So it's incredibly important that this sort of service exists, and it's a great opportunity that they're going to be able to open right here in the center of town with, you know, literally a baseball throws proximity uh, from our school department offices. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh <clears throat> Good evening. I'm Philip Archidiakono, president of Lunenburg Village. And uh, we used to be the owners of Three Lancaster Avenue. 
So this is our chance, my chance on behalf of my family at the village to say we think this is a great transformation of the building. And uh, we're happy to see these uses happening in the center of town. Uh, we think it's gonna be a benefit to everyone and we fully support it. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? Uh, yeah. Good evening, my name is Art Cavillo from, um, I'm the owner of the property, 3 Lancaster Ave, and I live in uh, 401 Mopus Road in Bloomberg. Been there almost nine years. Um, the opportunity came to me about purchasing the building because I made my office is upstairs and I just wanted to get closer. And my product came to me immediately. I'm like, absolutely. It's a great opportunity for me to give to the community to show that you know, we want that in the community of Lunenburg. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. And anybody else? I'm seeing none. And nothing on. And nothing on Zoom. Now I will call for a motion. Unless the board has any other questions. No. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we um, approve the special permit to operate within the village district at 3 Lancaster Avenue. I'll second the motion. You have a motion and a second. I'll call for a vote. Jim? Aye. 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 Steve. And aye. So um, it is passed. Uh, that, that's good. I do have to read you a post decision instructions. Um, the special permit is granted with the contingency that Patricia complies with all licenses, regulations, statutes, ordinances, and all applicable local, state, federal boards, or agencies with jurisdiction over the provinces. The special permit is subject to a periodic review by the permit granting authority of the enforcement order to ensure compliance. Noncompliance to such conditions may result in revocation of the permit. A copy of the board's decision shall be filed with the town clerk within 14 days. Any party agreed by the board's decision may appeal to Superior Court 20 days after the decision is filed with the town clerk. After certifi certification by the town clerk that 20 days have elapsed since the decision was filed, you should have it recorded in the Registry of Deeds. No special permit shall take effect until it has been recorded. And with that, I wish you very good luck, and I think it's a great cause. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. have one more hearing tonight. Ready? Okay. Uh, Annie, if you would uh, read the next application. Through the Zoning Board of Appeals, the application for a special permit, Mass General Law, Chapter 40A, Section 9. Name and address of the applicants, Paula M. Valente, 32 St. Peter Street, Fitchburg, Massachusetts, 01420, and Jason M. Valente, 1 Old Country Road, Westminster, Massachusetts, 01473. The undersigned hereby appeals with special permit for rebuilding a new home on a pre-existing non-conforming property. Has the proposed action or use begun? Yes. The basis for this application is found in the following section of the Ludenberg Zoning Bylaw 250-7.4B2. The street address is 30 Johnson Street, Lunenburg, Massachusetts, 01473. Assessor's map and parcel is 13733. Name and address of each holder of legal title to the land, which is subject to this case, Paula M. Valente. 149 High Street, Fitchburg, Massachusetts, and Jason M. Valente, 9 Country Road in Westminster, Massachusetts. 
Deed recorded, Western Northern District Registry of Deeds, Book 10335, page 235, recorded May 20th, 2022. I, we have no knowledge of a prior appeal, application, or petition concerning the land or building involving this case. And it was signed on the 9th of August, 2023 by Paula Valente, 32 St. Peter Street. And there is a narrative included. Um, I began the process of building my retirement home in June of 2021. Not knowing the process of building, I started communicating with the town of Lunenburg in November of 2021 for guidance for the proper steps to take. Engineers Dillis and Roy were hired. Order of conditions was approved. Conservation commission approval was made. Skillings was hired for a new artisan well. Septic permit was obtained. Excavation company was contacted. They would wait until the foundation was in before doing the septic. They would be doing the digging once. After communicating with then building commissioner in October or November of 2022, Casey Burlingame, I believed my next step was to get an asbestos remediation done for a permit to demolish the existing building. I was never informed that I would have to go before the ZBA before I could build because I had an existing non-conforming lot. Because of the failure of communication by the Mr. Burlingame, the cottage was torn down in December of 2022. I would never have the structure removed before I had the proper approval to build. Um, and attached are the building plans, site plans, and the list of abutters. Good. Thank you. Okay, and with that, I would invite the applicant to please come forward to the mic. Hi, Paula Valente, 32 St. Peter Street in Fitchburg, Mass. I did notice that I put the wrong zip code on that form oh. that you just read. I put the Westminster zip code instead of Lunenburg zip code. Okay. Um, I, is there anything you would like to add to the? Um, well, in addition to you having the permits, I, we've also received the um, approved energy audits from the state and the approved building um, Per, uh, not the permits, but the plans for the modular that I, I plan to put up. So we're, we've are we continued to try to work forward um, until we get our final approval, hopefully from the zoning, zoning board. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think that the issue came up. Under 257.2, um, the voluntary demolition of a non-conforming structure without permission from the ZBA um, constitutes abandonment. So that's, that's where this came in. And we understand, I think, um, that uh, there's, there's a little bit of confusion too because there are certain circumstances that if it's in the, it's a non-conforming building or a non-conforming lot and it, it's what's gonna be torn down and rebuilt is in the exact same footprint without the same setbacks um, and heights and all of that. Uh, then you can get a permit without coming to the DBA. Um, I think some of that may have happened here, but I'm not sure um, what happened. But uh, as you said, the building is torn down. And now you have you started, have you got the cellar hold? Have you done anything? We have not done that because... Because it was held up, you can't get the per building permit. At correct. This time. Correct, okay. Thank you. That I'm going to just open it right up to the board. Have you had all the other uh, approvals from the board of health? Uh, Neshober? Yes. Um, septic, water? Yes. Um, I noticed where the water was in the septic, but there are no, dim d uh, very difficult to read what the dimensions are to find the distances right. between the house and either the well or the septic system or anything like that they um well dillis and roy did do the engineering and so they made sure that all those requirements were were met when they did the plans um and they went with me uh before the conservation commission um and so that was all part of their approval i 
I, under that assumption. Um, the septic is way on the other side of the lot, um, way away from the well. The house is 52 feet long. Um, the garage is 24 feet long. Um, the house actually sits a little further away from the water than the original cottage, um, but then it meets the street requirements and the, and the sideline requirements. Just, just to follow up to that. <coughs> Are you going to ask? Well, I was, gonna, I was gonna ask. So we we only have this in our in our packet. Okay. I'm really interested in. Okay, you have a you you know you're considered you knock this house down. Typically, what we see is you'd come before us or and and you'd provide a a, a plan such as this that has where the existing building is, the footprint that yeah, you're it, trying to knock down, and then where your building that is going to go. And I, I'm interested in. Does it meet all the setbacks? Your current, the current house that you're looking at. Does it meet all the setbacks? And, yes, yes. and can we get a copy of the meets and bounds so we can, like Jim said, so we can see where the existing. I, I can't see where the existing structure is. And you addition. need a larger. I'd like a larger one because honestly, I've, personally, I, I'm not. I can't vote on it unless I see what's going on here. And, and Dillis and Roy is very good about saying, okay, these are the requirements that you need for the zone. Yes. Um, and they usually have a little table on there. So I'm wondering, it, it might be on here, but I can't see it. Okay. I guess and is the I question. did call them prior to this meeting to yep. make sure that you were going to have what you need. And yep. he he thought that what so maybe it's on here i just can't see it yep okay okay yeah i i was i will agree with you i was going to ask you if you could uh review the previous structure with the proposed new structure in regard to the size the setbacks at the location because as Hans is absolutely correct i couldn't read read where it was either and you know i mean as far as the footprint, do you know how much bigger it is? Well, the house Are you is building it on the exact same footprint? I no, know you're not, not the, because you said you're moving it back. Yeah, it's not the exact same footprint. The, the cottage that was I'm there... I'm talking about size-wise. Yeah, the cottage that was there was um, 32 by... Oh, I can't remember along the front. It was, sm it was smaller. It's, it was just a one, two, two, four-room cottage. Right. Um, so it was uh, 32 feet deep, I think, and uh, maybe 20 feet wide. But this one, this house is going to be 24 feet rather than the 32. Mm. And then, okay. but the length is 52. Okay. Instead of how many? That one was about probably about 20 feet. This is so going to be a increasing home. Increasing it from a length of 20 feet to 62. 52. 52. Is that including the garage? The, the garage is 24 feet additional. So it's going to be a total of 76. Yeah, it, it's going to be a bigger house. It's going to be a house to live in. So I'm assuming that they've cited it with all the, all the current setbacks. That's, what I, that's my question. Yeah, and so they, I think that would be, could be answered by a bigger you know, architectural plan where we could see, yeah. see it. Yeah, they did. It is on there. They, you can see where the... But you may not be able if, to see it on that copy. You can see the original. Anybody on the board? Can anybody see the dimensions of the smaller one versus the larger? I, well, we've been trying. I even tried blowing it up, Mr. Chair, and I couldn't see it on the computer yeah. blown up. No, I didn't see anything at all on what the prior one was. I mean, I, <clears throat> I, I don't, uh, I mean, the, the issue is, is that, you know, you didn't get the ZBA approval before you had knocked it down. Did, did the prior building inspector tell you that you had to do that? I mean, you, it looks like you got every other board that we would usually say, okay, we need, you know, you got the Conservation Commission. Right. You got every other board. I, I don't, you know, I just, uh, did it fall through the cracks and they just didn't say anything to you yeah, about it? Yeah, Casey didn't tell me that I, I needed to go before zoning board. It was just, you know, this is what you have to do. This, and I just did what he told me to do. So um, on this, you can actually see, do you see where the dark area is, where the house is? Can you, can you make that out? I think I can, and I think I can see a, a light colored, which would look like maybe that's the pre-existing, exactly. that was the existing structure yes. there. Yes, yes. Do you, can you see where all this, the, the current setback, the table? I can't see the setback table. 
no, I can see where the road is and the distance and just yeah. looking at, at, at the size of the house and the distance no. from the road, it's obviously set system back enough there. Um, yeah, I just, yeah. I just before I would say yay or nay on anything, I'd like to see the meet. I'd like to see the, the dimensions of what you're doing because you're ex obviously expanding a non-conforming lot, right? You're knocking this down. You're building something bigger. Yes. I just personally like to see where those like what the setbacks are and that you meet all the requirements before giving your approval to do so. Was anyone able to go down to the lot? prior to the meeting or I, I, I we drove by the lot but it's just a matter of I still can't tell where where things are right okay from that the st they, you know, they had put some stakes I, in I didn't break break out the tape measure and start to okay. try to put things down okay. plus I don't know uh, there's certain ideas of the depending on how the roof goes how it changes how far you can be from the certain lines and things like that as well depending on how the roof goes so the, the dimension you know so you have to be a certain setback from the side yards from the and from other things yeah and so that that also constitutes different areas too yeah yeah we definitely took that into kind of, you know consideration when we had the plans done did i'm sorry did you finish no I'm fine. yeah did the um when you when you went to talk to the new uh building commissioner um and he sent you here and from what i'm reading he only sent you here for the one thing and Dillis and Roy are usually very good about telling you what you need to get from every board. So if there was setback problems, uh, and he must have been able to see, I don't know if you had a bigger plan that you submitted to him? To? To the building commissioner? It was in the portal, it was all through the portal, so none of them are, are oh, big. Was, okay. Um, so I do have a larger out. one though at home, um, you know, the. Twenty four by two, the, yeah. like the two by threes, yeah, the bigger I, ones. Yeah, I do have that at home. If I'd <coughs> have known, I, I could have brought it with me tonight, but I had no idea. Oh, yeah. That's um, cool. And in fact, the, this building commissioner did actually issue me a well. He he said I was approved for a building permit, but I was waiting for the approval from the state before I ran down to get it. But two days later, he rescinded it because when he went through the file is when he noticed that the Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so I'm gonna leave it up. How, how, how far do you live from here? I, we live in Fitchburg. Oh, it's about okay. a 20 minute ride. Here, here's, my, here's my suggestion, Mr. Chairman. I, I, it's a little unusual, but I think we've done it before. I'm okay with issuing a special permit on the conditions that she brings in a bigger set and that it has all the meets and bounds and setbacks uh, you know and you know maybe she brings it in the office and you review it and, and uh, can I mean, other, other that, otherwise she's gonna have to come back right that's what I was going to say the the only option we would have if, if we need to see that tonight I was going to say we really have to continue your hearing till for two weeks okay but if and I, I and I do concur with you. I think Dillis and Roy would point out if there was any kind of uh, dimensional setback issues right. with the existing, yeah. you know, where they were citing the new house. Right. So um, I would accept Hans. Okay. Vote. I mean, we can, you know, take a and vote. and and what we would do, we would condition it that that I would look at it. Yeah. And, and yeah, because if it meets all the setbacks, she doesn't have to come back. You can right. take a look at it, and you know if we we, we set it up that way, yeah, everybody's nice. happy. You know? Thank you. You probably want to build your house. Yeah, we started in twenty twenty one. I'm yeah, <laughs> we're living in a rental now that yeah. you know they want to sell the house and we, they can't sell it because we're in it. Yeah. Right. Ms. Chair, I was going to say that was my point. It's just I'd like to get the opinion of the present building inspector on the plans as well you know as well okay right? because and that would have been exactly what Hans yeah me. and I it think Hans was. asked him some questions and he has a letter from the building inspector. yeah I asked the building Not inspector of that's pointed out correct? yeah and it's I think it's I mean he just talked I just was more curious from the building inspector right. standpoint that now that they've knocked this house down what's their protection and and essentially you lose the protection of the non-conforming lot but my question was, okay, if they lost the non-conforming, the non-conformity on that lot, now you're asking them to put a new house up. Does that meet the, the current setbacks of the bylaw, in which case it would just issue a special permit? So that's what I want to know. Yeah. 
Um, and I, you know, I think the building inspector said that you probably have a little bit more protection just because you abandon it doesn't really mean I mean, you still have a two year right. window. Right. So, so you're window. protected as far as I'm concerned and what the building inspector in, in, interpreted. Um, my question is that I just want to make sure that the setbacks are correct. And, and if and if they're not, I think we'd have to come back before the board. We would have. But to if they back. are, and 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 the chairman thinks that they meet all the setbacks, I have I have no problem with that. So. Um, I don't know if you want to take. I, uh, do you want to take the public comment and then we can make a we can make a motion? Yeah, I will. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so I will take public comment. If anyone would like to speak, since we only have one gentleman. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's nobody on Zoom. And there's nobody on Zoom. <laughs> okay, so I'll bring it back to the board. My neighbors have all been in favor of this since day one. <laughs> I appreciate you didn't bring in the 17 letters for. They, <laughs> they had, you know, there was a little cottage there. It was the worst house on the street. <clears throat> right, right. I noticed it was. I, also I, I will just tell you though that letters from neighbors is is a good thing to have. So you should always submit them as well if you have to come again. I didn't ask or anybody them to listening. Do, I didn't ask them to do that. I noticed yeah. there was also it's on a peninsula, and the only person that you'd have to be careful of obstructed views of anything is across the street so there is no obstruction and he and he was on the zoom meeting for the conservation commission and was all in favor okay okay Good. So, so you're going to have to whoever makes the motion you're going to have to condition it yeah I'll make the motion that we um, <coughs> we issue a special permit to construct a home on a pre-existing non-conforming parcel on condition that the applicant brings in a bigger um, yeah full size yeah full size um, site, plan. site plan that that shows us uh, the Seven. existing the existing uh, structure where it's supposed to be built and then where the old structure was on the plans and then I would say that um, if you bring that into the building department and the chairperson looks at it and is okay with it I'm okay with it um, when would should I bring that in um, I, I would bring it in as soon as you can I mean if we have 14 it's going to be 14 days anyway yeah. so you've got time to bring it in yeah. But we want to have time to review it too. So absolutely, you yeah, don't so have to rush it in tomorrow. But if you brought it in next week, that's fine. Okay. Do I have a second? And oh. do you need just one copy? I'm sorry. You okay. would just need one. Yeah, you don't have to go nuts at Staples. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, Mr. Chair, I'd like to be, have the building inspector's opinion on it as well. Okay. You know, just just to make sure from his point of view that there was no that there's nothing that he would have, other issues he would have. Yep. Very good. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Second. Yeah. Aye. 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 And aye. With that, it is granted. Okay, thank you. On that one condition. Yes. So we gotta it will be met. Hold a little bit. <laughs> thank you. Um, I do have some post reading I have to do. The special permit is granted with the contingency that the petition complies with all licenses, regulations, statutes, ordinances, and any and all applicable local, state, federal boards, or agencies with jurisdiction over the premises. The special permit is subject to a periodic review by the permit granting authority of the enforcement off enforcement officer to ensure compliance with any conditions. Non-compliance to such conditions may result in revocation of this permit. A copy of the board decision shall be filed with the town clerk within 14 days. Any party agreed by the board decision may appeal to Superior Court 20 days after the decision is filed with the town clerk. Any certificate after certification by the town clerk that 20 days have elapsed since the decision was filed, you should have it recorded in the registry of deeds. No special permit shall take effect until it has been recorded. And a special permit shall lapse within two years unless substantial use or construction has commenced. And with that, uh, thank you. Thank you. If there's nothing else before the board, I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye and aye.
This meeting is adjourned.